Welcome to this special feature on Elizabeth Clarer. Today, we're deviating from our usual format of sharing viewer-submitted stories to explore the fascinating life of Elizabeth Clarer, a key figure in UFO history. Join us as we delve into her remarkable experiences and legacy. Elizabeth Clarer, born Elizabeth Woolat on July 1, 1910, in the tranquil town of Mui River, Natal, South Africa, would become a figure of profound intrigue and controversy. Known for her striking claims of extraterrestrial contact, Clara captivated the world with stories that began in her childhood and spanned decades, peaking between 1954 and 1963. Her journey into the unknown began innocuously enough, with a purported visitation when she was just seven years old. In 1956, she began to publicly share her encounters, making headlines with her assertion that she had been contacted by aliens multiple times. But Elizabeth's story took an even more sensational turn. She was not just a contactee. She was among the first women to claim a sexual relationship with an extraterrestrial being. In her book Beyond the Light Barrier, Elizabeth strived to convey these profound messages. Elizabeth's vision was not without its critics, yet it resonated with many who longed for hope and harmony in a tumultuous world. She spoke of a conspiracy, an international cover-up designed to keep humanity in the dark about alien technology and the true nature of the universe. At the age of seven, Elizabeth and her older sister Barbara claimed to have their first UFO encounter. While feeding their celium puppies outside the farmhouse, they witnessed a silver disc bathed in a pearly luster swooping over them. Simultaneously, a giant, orange-red and cratered planetoid was observed orbiting and rotating high in the atmosphere. The disc rushed to meet it, guiding it northwards while the planetoid left a smoke trail in its wake. Only months later, Elizabeth had another sighting in the company of Latham, their Zulu farm manager. Latham interpreted the sighting through the lens of Zulu mythology. Elizabeth sometimes alluded to an even earlier sighting, at age three in 1913 or 1914. Elizabeth completed a four-year diploma in meteorology at Girton College, Cambridge, and was taught by her first husband to fly a Tiger Moth light aircraft. During a 1937 flight from Durban to Baragwanath in a Leopard Moth aircraft, Elizabeth and her husband reportedly saw a saucer that approached, coasted along, and then departed. During World War II, Elizabeth held a responsible position in RAF intelligence. In 1954, Elizabeth Clara's sister May, residing on the farm Whiteleaf in the Natal Midlands, informed her of reports from the native Zulu people about the appearance of the lightning bird in the sky. Responding to these intriguing accounts, Elizabeth and her children traveled from Johannesburg to the farm, and on December 27th, she ascended Flying Saucer Hill. It was there she claimed to witness a starship descending. The ship hovered three meters above the ground, emitting a soft hum. Its hull spun while its central dome remained stationary. Through one of three portholes, Elizabeth saw a spaceman who later identified himself as Akon. However, a barrier of heat emanating from the ship prevented her from approaching, and the scout ship eventually departed. On April 7, 1956, Elizabeth returned to the hilltop after further reports of the lightning bird. This time, Akon took her aboard his scout ship, a craft approximately 60 feet in diameter. Akon was tall, with blonde hair and rather piercing blue eyes. Inside the craft, she met a second pilot, described as stocky and darker skin than Akon, who was supposedly both a botanist and an astrophysicist. Elizabeth was shown a lens offering views through the craft's floor. With only a hum emanating from below and no sense of movement, 
they were transported to an enormous cigar-shaped mothership with a garden-like interior. After meeting its inhabitants, she was returned to the hilltop. During the encounter, kisses were exchanged, and Akon revealed that Elizabeth was a reincarnated Metonian and his long-lost soulmate. He explained that Metonians occasionally took Earthwomen as partners to strengthen their race with new blood, and claimed that a number of Metonians were living surreptitiously among humans. On April 30, 1956, from 5.45 p.m. until 2 a.m., various observers noted a steady red glow poised at a rocky section of the hill. No sign of a fire was found afterwards. On July 17, 1956, after the family farm was sold, Elizabeth revisited the area and claimed to have taken a series of seven photos of Akon's scout ship using her sister's simple brownie box camera. She described vivid light flashes turning into a dull gray craft enveloped in a shimmering heat haze. For an hour, the disc darted silently over a rise near the farmhouse, making several weaving detours and shone like silver in bright sunlight before streaking away out of sight. Edgar Seavers, a ufologist from Pretoria, noted that Elizabeth's family saw her leave the homestead alone and suggested that it would have been difficult for the frail Elizabeth to throw a car hubcap and photograph it simultaneously. He also stated that no type of hubcap was known to sufficiently resemble the disc in the photos. In April 1958, Elizabeth Clara reported a series of extraordinary contacts that set her story apart from the typical UFO narratives of the 1950s. She claimed that Akan's visits culminated in a day-long rendezvous on the high plateau of Kathkin Peak. During this encounter, Akan presented her with a silver ring that enhanced their telepathic connection and their love was consummated, leading to the conception of a child. I surrendered in ecstasy to the magic of his lovemaking, our bodies merging in magnetic union as the divine essence of our spirits became one, Elizabeth later recounted. According to Clara, after a terrestrial pregnancy, she and her MG car were transported in 1959 to Akon's home planet, Miton, which orbits Proxima Centauri in the Alpha Centauri star system. There, she delivered a son named Ailing. He remained on Miton to be educated, while Elizabeth reluctantly returned to Earth. She claimed that Miton's planetary vibrations affected her heart, preventing her from returning. Instead, she received follow-up visits from Akon and Ailing. The entire trip, including the delivery and return, supposedly took no more than four months. However, due to differences in space-time, she experienced a nine-year stay on Miton. There were no cities or skyscrapers as Earth people know them anywhere on Miton. Homes were scattered in park-like grounds. There was an abundance of all things needed by civilization, food, water, and all materials for building, an unlimited supply of energy on tap from the atmosphere and the universe, no shortages of any kind, and no monetary system at all, she described. Clara took her time before publishing a book about her extraterrestrial adventures, titled Beyond the Light Barrier, which was released in 1980. On his world lecture tour in the late 1950s, George Adamski, another well-known UFO contactee, made a point of visiting South Africa to meet Clara and discuss their experiences with the friendly, wise Space Brothers. By that time, Clara was not the only Adamski follower to claim experiences of space motherhood. Despite the ridicule from the press due to her outlandish claims, Elizabeth welcomed any attention as it helped disseminate Akon's message, which she considered a life task of utmost importance. From about 1960 to 1966, Elizabeth worked on the manuscript for her book, which now included the Akon love saga. She felt compelled to reveal the truth. 
1968, she was interviewed by ufologist Cynthia Hind, with Hind's write-up appearing in the August edition of Fate magazine. Another ufologist, Kitty Smith, reached out to Elizabeth after reading about her in Outspan magazine, and even claimed her own sighting of Akan's ship in January 1984. Elizabeth was vocal against other alleged alien contactees like Anne Grevler and Philip Human, challenging their claims and methods. Her firm stance was that space beings would never communicate through trance mediums or other such methods. In 1975, Elizabeth was invited by Hermann Obert to the 11th International Congress of UFO Research Groups in Wiesbaden, Germany, where she delivered a speech that earned a standing ovation. Despite her age and the difficulty of the journey, Elizabeth faithfully commemorated the anniversary of her union with Akon every 7th of April by returning to Flying Saucer Hill. She befriended South African Air Force helicopter pilots who facilitated her visits to the hill when horseback rides became too challenging. Elizabeth's third husband, Aubrey Fielding, passed away in 1981, and his ashes were scattered on Flying Saucer Hill. Elizabeth herself died of breast cancer at age 84, leaving her second book, The Gravity File, unfinished. This book aimed to fill in the gaps of her first book, explaining the military and political aspects of UFO research and Akon's electrogravity propulsion technology. Before her death, Elizabeth shared with acquaintances that her son Ailing, like Akon, was now an astrophysicist, traveling the universe with his father, his spacewoman Clea, and their son. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. What do you think about Elizabeth Clara's story? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, keep looking to the stars and stay curious.